Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are having a long old chat about breakups, the pain, how we're gonna get over them. And obviously, just as a disclaimer, everything that I say is just from my personal experience and what I have done in my life to help me in these situations. So I have a list because I have asked you guys on Instagram particular things that you want me to cover. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna try and do it as quick as I can, but you know me and I'm gonna go blah, blah, blah about this because I feel so passionately about this subject. Or I feel so passionate about this subject. Um, and it's just such a big thing because most of us go through a breakup or two or three in our lives and I'm just gonna say, if you are on the multiple breakup count, like me, it gets easier every time, actually. Uh, well, it did for me get easier because I think I had such a heartbreaking time when I was about 21 that I vowed to myself, I would never let myself get in that state again um, over a boy or over a relationship. So I wanna start by saying, actually, that breakups are such a beautiful thing. They are painful, that's for sure, and they hurt, but they are a time for you to really, really focus on yourself now. So if you've gone through a breakup and you're hurting and you were crying, don't worry because it gets better and it gets so much better if you allow yourself to go in and focus on you and rebuilding you and doing it only for you and no one else. And this means that when you come to another relationship one day, you're gonna be this strong, powerful character that is ready to love because you're gonna be loving yourself at this point and then you're gonna be such a better partner when you are loving and you are not hurting. But obviously, pain is something that we have to deal with. Before I get into the questions and specific thing that, things that you guys want me to answer, I'm just gonna give my quick top tips for dealing with a breakup, so you don't have to watch the whole of this video if you don't want to. So the first thing is that you need to manifest daily or have daily mantras or have things that are gonna bring about instant um, gratitude and make you feel good. So every day I look in the mirror and this was whether I was, this started when I had my last breakup and I still do it now. And I look in the mirror and I say, you are beautiful, you are enough, that is very important. You are enough, or I am enough, but I say it in the mirror. So you can say this as I am or you are. You are beautiful, you are enough, you are successful, you are powerful, you are loving. I say, I am so lucky that I can love so deeply. Because if you're hurting from a breakup, it's because you've loved someone so much. And that is actually such a beautiful thing to be able to fully and unconditionally love and adore and be committed in a relationship to someone. It doesn't matter whether it works out or not, the fact that you are capable of expressing those emotions and really feeling that deep love is such an amazing thing. You might find that you wish that you didn't have those feelings, but really, when you come to life, you wanna be able to love your friends, your family, your partners, your animals. You wanna really be able to feel that. And there's a lot of people in this world that actually don't know how to feel love. So if you're suffering right now and you're upset, it's you're blessed to be able to feel those emotions. So first, appreciate that and manifest on it and say, I am loved, I love unconditionally, I am enough, I am enough. I say it every single day, I am enough. Actually, I'm more than enough, you're more than enough. Like, we are amazing. Just gonna put that out there. And then secondly, top tip, focus on yourself. This is now a time where you are alone and you have the time to read. You don't need to be focusing on someone else in your life. You have you as your sole focus and you can read, learn about yourself, learn what you like, learn what you don't like, reflect on things and really do some inner work to make yourself feel good. Tip number three, blare some amazing music that makes you feel good. So when I broke up with my last partner last year, or like 18 months ago now, Ariana Grande had just released her Thank You Next album and I would put it on repeat and sing the words as loud as I could and dance around and really 
feel that energy of like, see you later. I'm ready to focus on me. And this is how I'm going forward with it. And there's so many albums that are so good for that. Um, but my highly recommended one is Ariana Grande, Thank You Next. It's just the perfect breakup album. Fourth tip, put yourself out there. Now is a chance to take every single opportunity that comes your way. You don't have to check in with anyone about it. You don't have to ask their permission, but you shouldn't be asking permission anyway in a healthy relationship. But now is there is no one can say no to you. You should go on that holiday, go to that concert, go on all the dates that you like. See dating as like become a student of life. If you want to date, it doesn't mean that you have to go into a committed relationship with a person that you're dating. It is literally going out, having fun with someone, learning what you do and you don't like about them. And that's just, everything is a lesson. So be a student of life here. And the last tip, number five, is accept and observe your emotions, but don't let them run your whole day. So I was really, really heartbroken because I had to make a decision to leave a relationship that at the time I didn't really want to leave. I just knew out of respect for myself, I had to be out of that relationship. So the decision was on me and I was sad about it, but I would wake up in the morning or through the day or whenever it hit me and when I had the time to think about it, I'd sit there and think about it. I would cry if I needed to. I would talk who, talk to whoever was there if I wanted to for maybe 30 minutes, one hour, and then that was it. That was the, the time that I allowed myself to feel those emotions in the day. And the rest of the day was about the rest of my life because you still have a really good life that you need to be living. So do not let yourself mope around and be depressed about someone who probably doesn't deserve you, which is the reason why you're breaking up. So they absolutely don't deserve it. And just give yourself that time to observe your feelings and then move on with the rest of your day and make sure you're doing things that you enjoy. Go for walks, get outside. Don't stay in bed all day. I know that it is um, sometimes appealing to just lay in bed and cry all day. Maybe if you've just broken up, you can do that for a day or two, but then get yourself out there and go and have some fun for yourself. Now I'll get into the questions. So... Okay, I've written down a note here. Whether you got broken up with or you have broken up with someone, you're probably hurting. So like I just said earlier, I made the decision to end the relationship and that was actually something that I took very seriously and it hurt. And there were so many, I actually think it's almost harder to leave someone than it is to be broken up with. I've been broken up with by that guy twice and I couldn't do anything about it because he broke up with me so so I just had to deal with it so I did like and then we ended up getting back together but this time when I left the relationship I knew like there was no going back because I've left I was finally done and that was a big decision so try to think about your partner um, or your ex-partner like you're both hurting that's for sure now you just need to find a way to deal with it Something that I found really important was to never wish any harm on them or never wish anything bad for them. Like I broke up with them for myself and that was it. Um, and I just had to deal with that. And uh, this ties into a question of how, how to not think about your ex. You're going to think about them, that's for sure. And they've said like not in a bad way, but how do you stop thinking about them? There are some times when you know, they will pop into your mind. And I've written down this because I had this moment the other day, you know, we're still 18, 18 months after we've broken up now. And um, we've gone through a few dramas, like my dog being stolen and him not letting me out of my house and things like that. But no matter what he's done to me, no matter what he said, I wish no harm on him. And I was listening to Whitney, album, Whitney Houston's songs the other day. And in I Will Always Love You, she says, I'm going to read the, read the quote. I'm not going to sing it for you. But she says, I hope life treats you kind and I hope you have all you've dreamed of. And I wish to you joy and happiness. But above all of this, I wish for you love. And I really felt that deeply for him. Like, I don't wish any harm on this person. 
I just wish him love. I wish him joy. I wish him happiness. I wish he could let me go fully and let me out of the house. Like, I just want him to find his happiness. Like, I have found my happiness in James because it's really such a magical, wonderful thing to find a true and genuine love and to find a partner to be so happy with. And I really wish that on everyone. So it doesn't really matter. Like, everybody acts and maybe regrets the way that they act or are acting from a place of hurt or fear or whatever they're acting from they choose to do that and they lose people but i just hope that people learn from their mistakes whether this is your ex or yourself and they grow and learn and meet someone new and then they have that happiness because no one deserves to be sad no one deserves to be treated bad and no one deserves to treat someone else bad so um, it's okay to think about them and wish them love but just take that moment to to wish it for them and then don't dwell on it like it's nice if they pop into your mind and you think oh I wonder if they're all right oh that's nice like and then just like don't look at their social media or but also it's just not a bad thing if you are just thinking kind things to a person because it's just sending love out there to the universe which is a really <laughs> wonderful excuse me is <laughs> you come here so a question, when, Sarge, how do you know when enough is enough and how to stop going back? This is something that I think a lot of us have dealt with. So many people have broken up and got back, and toge got back together, myself included, and love is like a drug. And it's something that you just get used to having around. So it's almost like a routine to have someone in your life. So when you break up with them, they you remove them from your life. And you feel like something's missing. Now, you need to fill that time with focusing on yourself. But it's very normal to feel like, oh, maybe we should give it another chance. It's because you love them. Because love doesn't finish the minute that your relationship finishes. Love is a very powerful and strong feeling that doesn't just go away no matter what someone has done to you no matter how they've treated you if you love someone unconditionally it doesn't just switch off so you need to try and decide the difference between loving and caring for someone or being in love with someone so with my ex i loved him unconditionally and i cared for him for sure but after the way that he treated me for so long i fell out of love with him um, and I had to draw that line, which was in the end when I couldn't forgive him for what he'd done and decided to leave. And I'm so glad for those chain of events now. But it's it was tough to break through that line of do I just care for him because I've spent five years with him? Or am I madly in love with him and I really want this to work? And my answer was I just cared for him because I loved him. And I had to be strong in that moving forward. Breaking away from someone is difficult. This is why I think it's easier to be broken up with than it is to leave someone, but you can do it. I think that it's really important to write down great things about the relationship and things that you've learned that you don't want moving forward in the relationship and really focus on that, you know, the negative list. So these are usually the reasons why you've broken up with someone. The pros to the relationship are usually something that anyone can give you, like time spent together, talking to someone every day, love, sex, and affection. These pros can come, come from anyone. And then the negative could also come from anyone, but like in this particular relationship that you've had, the negative, he said these things to me, he cheated on me or she cheated on me. Um, the family or there's there's a list of negative things that are probably going to apply to that soul relationship rather than a general thing so pros we have morning sex i like morning sex we had good days out together we created good memories together you can create memories with anyone you can have sex with anyone you can spend time with anyone all of those things, the pros are going to be a general list, I bet you. Negative list, really focus on it. What are the things, and just not like he did this and he did that. It's like, how did he make me feel? He said this, which made me feel like this. I spent the rest of my life treading on eggshells. Uh, I spent the rest of my relationship treading on eggshells because of this. 
then you start to realize that you are not fully yourself around this person because they've made you feel in a certain way. And that's sometimes really hard to come back from. Like, I think that if people blow their chance, then they blow their chance and you should move on. So try to, if you're considering going back with someone, try to think about the reasons of why it didn't work versus the reasons why it did. And are you just holding on to the comfort of having someone around or are you really truly madly in love with that person? Are you going to forgive them? And are you going to forget about what they've done? Are you still going to feel 100% yourself around this person? Because that is really, really important. I have never until my relationship with James actually felt 100% vulnerable myself. He doesn't, he doesn't pick at me um, or put me down or say things that would ever make me act in a different way so in my last relationship I would like do things and then immediately I would think oh my god what's he going to think about that or what's he going to have to say about that and that could be anything like I remember one uh, in the house that we was living in I'd done up one of the rooms in 48 hours and the house was actually quite a problem in our relationship because we bought a house to do up and he never really did any of it and that was what we decided so I started doing a lot of it myself and he came and I was so proud of he went away for the weekend and I'd completely gutted a room stripped it out painted it put wallpaper up painted the skirt and boards put a radiator cover on got my brother to put new flooring in like I did it from start to finish some of you might have seen it on my Instagram and he came in and I was so excited to show him, but I had this gut feeling in the back of my head that it wasn't gonna be good enough and it was gonna be an argument. And he came in and it was like 9.30 at night. And I was just like, oh, what do you think the room, look what I've done? And he was like, it looks like a two-year-old has painted it in here. What was, you, did you get some toddlers around? What a waste of time that was. This room was gonna be a bathroom. Well, actually, honey, you haven't done anything in 18 months in the house, so, if that is going to be a bathroom, that ain't going to happen in the next 10 years. So I've made this a room for people to stay in. You know, it's like, those are the issues where I was treading on eggshells, where I knew that I was doing a good thing. And for anyone else in any other relationship, it was going to be enough. But in this relationship with this person, it wasn't enough. Um, and there was just only things for him to moan at, at me. I didn't do the dishwashing good enough. I didn't hoover the floor the good enough. I didn't, I shrunk his laundry. You know, like, you know, shit. Just every single thing that I'd done was shit. Um, and you don't want to feel like that. Whether you love someone or not, you do not want to be made to feel like shit. So get the fuck out of a relationship that makes you feel that way. And on going back, sometimes the sexual chemistry and the sexual pull can be like the sole reason that people will go return to relationships because you have that. Sex is not enough. And sometimes love is not enough either. So you have to remember that just because you have a good sexual chemistry, there's a thing called devil dick. And that is the single best way to describe a toxic dick where you fucking love the sex that you have but if you really look at the relationship, you have nothing else going for you. I did not connect with him on an emotional level at all. We, you know, we had the same thoughts sometimes because we'd spent so long together, but when it came down to emotions, opinions, um, you know, things that really matter in life, maybe how you're gonna raise your children, all of these stuff, we had zero, nothing. So do not fall for the devil dick. That is a really, 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 really bad trap. I think it's called dick sand, devil dick, toxic dick. You know, don't do it. We've all done it. I think it's good for everyone to have it and be there and been through it. And then no, let it go. So we've come to introducing someone new after a breakup, like James, for example. Um, and I've written down here on a note, like fuck society. So there's, Society will make you believe that you can't move on too fast. 
you shouldn't introduce someone else to your family so soon. What if it doesn't work out? But you know what? What if it does? If someone is making you feel amazing and you are so focused on that relationship and you want it to go somewhere, it doesn't matter whether it's two days after your last relationship or two years after your last relationship. It doesn't matter. Like Your friends and family should be happy for you. And especially if you meet someone so kind and genuine and loving, they are going to be over the moon. I literally met James and I said to my mom a couple of days after, I'm marrying him. And I was in Australia and she was like, oh, like for real? Or like, are you joking? And I was like, no, I'm, seriously, he's amazing. Oh, okay, when are you get married? Oh, in a few weeks. You can come if you want or not. Like, it's just, and she was over the moon for to see me so happy. And she still is. She messages me, you know, every week or so, or if I put something up with me and James, she's just like, Lauren, I am so happy to see you so happy and people will see it i mean you guys message me all the time you've had a glow up it is so nice to see you so happy with someone and it's so genuine um and i was never reluctant to share my relationship because it was so real and i don't care what anyone else thinks and i don't care if someone says like in the beginning, obviously, when I said I was marrying James after I'd known him for two weeks, everyone's like, are you sure? Like, you've only known him for two weeks. And I'm like, I know deep down this is the best decision. And now, you know, we've been married for six months. Everyone is now like, you're right. It is, it is the best decision that you've made. He's so kind and lovely. And you look so happy with him. And you are now living your dream life because you made that decision. Whereas all of those people, maybe at first, like, oh, I don't know about that. You know, like you do. So just fuck society and do what you feel is best. If you want to keep it quiet for a little bit, that's fine. Then introduce them when you feel ready. But it is not a problem to introduce a new person to your friends or family whenever you feel ready because they should be happy for you. And if they're not and they're reluctant at first and you know that it's the right thing, that, that that's all that matters because one day they're going to see your relationship unfold and then, then they're going to say, you were right there actually, like, good, well done. Like, well done for making those decisions. Is it necessary to have another person to get over someone? And then there's another question, like hooking up with other people maybe to get over someone. So obviously the main thing to take into account when you are having a sexual relationship with someone is that are both of your intentions the same? Um, if you just want to fuck someone, maybe there's someone out there that just wants to fuck you as well. Um, and that's great. And I, in my personal experience, I think that you don't, I personally haven't fully moved on from someone. And I'm saying like fully moved on in, in meaning like, stop to being sad about someone until I slept with someone else or until I was with someone else. And I think that comes down to when you break up with someone, whether they're right for you or not, you miss affection and you miss companionship and you just miss like being around someone. So I think that when you find someone that is when like you truly move on because you start having all these amazing experiences with someone else, then you forget about the other person. So to like move on fully, I'm saying yes, it definitely helps. But to like, I don't think that you should just sleep with someone like to get back at the other person or, but it's definitely gonna give you the affection. affection. Here comes my husband with some wine. Thank you. It's definitely gonna give you the affection. Is that still recording? Yeah. All right definitely going to give you the affection and the companionship that I think really helps like fully moving on from someone to like forget about them I, in my opinion hats off to girls that can just like do a fully single life and fully focus on themselves and go on a complete dick detox and get over someone but what do you think like if you do you, if you someone's asked is it necessary to have another person to fully, to move on, on completely? No. You don't think so? Mm -hmm. No, I mean like when you, you know when like you break up with someone and you, and you don't want to get back with them, but you still maybe think about them. And then when you actually become in a relationship with someone else, that's when you fully like forget who that person is. Depends how long you're by yourself for. 
Oh yeah, I guess you had a long, long time on your own. Yeah. Yeah. I well. Started, ended up enjoying my own company and wasn't keen on hanging with anyone. Yeah. Was he was loving it. All right. We've got. Okay. Is your partner's family a reason to break up? Now I had a good think about this question, and. It, de it solely depends on how your partner treats you. So having um, an awkward family is not admirable at all and it's not convenient. But if you're, like if James's family were assholes, but James still treated me how he does, I would still have married him. But if they were an, if they were assholes and he was also an asshole, then that's def definitely more reason to break up. Having hard um, and difficult families, and I have had this for quite a few years, um, quite a few relationships where the parents were um, difficult or not completely accepting of me, um, or just you know not very nice people, then that reflects on the relationship sometimes but like it's so hard because generally if someone has like dickhead parents with stupid views and stuff like they're maybe not going to be the coolest people either like the only you know, james is the person who i love dearly and connected with and like has and he is the most genuine kindest person that i've ever met and so are his mum and dad so there might be some kind of you know, correlation there with nice parents, but oh, it's such a hard one really, because it, it really comes down to how your partner treats you rather than how their family treat you. Um, and I went out with one guy for a while and his mum was such a hard person to be with. She didn't think that I spoke well enough. She didn't like the fact that I ate with my um, knife and fork in the wrong hand, like, you know, these silly things, or, you know, she's constantly telling him she's not the girl for you, blah, blah, blah. And I used to think like, oh, would she just fuck off? Like, get the fuck out of my relationship. And actually in the end, she was something that, she was a big part of the reason why we didn't work out. So it really depends on the impact that they're having on your relationship. And also like, think about the things in the future like when you if you had children with this person are they the grandparents that you want around your children are they the people that you want to you know drop your kids off to if they need looking after for the night or things like that like i i think that family is really really important and i am so blessed and grateful every day that james has such an incredible mum and dad like it's just it really is so special and that's like i said the first time that i've dated someone that has a really solid wonderful parents and it reflects on him as a person so there's a bit of a skewed answer there of just really generally how does he treat you and how much does it impact your relationship and someone's asked here the pain of seeing your ex with someone else it's tough it's hard especially if you think that you still love this person or maybe if you're the one broken up with but you have just got to put your big girl pants on and just know that he's someone else's problem now and you are going to find someone who's better for you. Um, and just be strong. Like You have to force yourself to be strong. There were so many days when I woke up and I just wanted to cry and I didn't want to go to work and I didn't want to do things like, no, fuck this. Like I'm not letting someone make me feel like this. I'm going to go to work. Luckily, I loved my job and my clients and everything. So that made me feel a lot better. Um, and I didn't have to be like professional as such. I didn't work a corporate job. Like if I wanted to cry to my clients, they were there for me. Um, but you do have to just put your big girl pants on and you just have to say like, this, this is temporary and I'm going to forget about this one day. And just look forward to that day that you're going to like think nothing of it. Like, um, I never really felt that about my last relationship, whether I'd be sad or not seeing him move on. But I was definitely sad about my guy before that. Like, I didn't want him to have another girlfriend at the time. But I was just a lot younger, you know. And I, and I like, I, could, I didn't want to be with him. But I also didn't want anyone else to have him. And that was just a young feeling that I had. 
now if I, like if it ever pops up on Instagram or anything, like I'm re I feel really happy for him that he's with a new girl and she seems like a really nice person, just like by pictures or whatever. Like I like I think that you kind of grow up from that, um, and it just takes time. Like one day you'll just you'll get past this feeling and you'll meet someone else and they're gonna be better for you. So to round up this video, I want to say that everything will always work out as it's meant to. And as long as you work on yourself and you fill yourself up with love, you're going to be in a position to give so much love to another person. And that's going to be the most magical thing um, like ever. It is so nice being in a nice relationship. If you are not in a nice relationship, leave because nice relationships are fucking wonderful. And um, that's all I really want to say. Temp pain is temporary. You're always going to always gonna get through it. And there's so many more things out there for you than a relationship with a shit person. So hope that you liked me rambling on today and I hope that I've helped you guys in some way and I love you and I'll see you on the next video. Time for some wine.